Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Heading down Route 1 early in the morning. Our first stop for the day is Wild Blueberry Land in Columbia Falls. Built in 2001, it's a tribute to Maine's blueberry, one of only three fruits native to North America. But unfortunately for John and I, it didn't open for another couple of hours, so we decided to hit the road. With views of Acadia National Park way in the distance, we continued on down Route 1, twisting and turning through small New England towns. Towards our second stop of the day in Hancock, Maine. Yeah, I'm Ray Murphy. I'm the founder of Chainsaw 1952. I go by the name Chainsaw Sawyer Artist, which is a trademark. What I do is real chainsaw. I still got a chip on my shoulder. Whenever I was a teenager, they wouldn't let me in a carving show, oh, yeah. a wood carving show, right? because mine was made with a non-carving tool. What I do is real chainsaw. I do things that no one else can do with a chainsaw. And that's what I have in this stage yard. Ray puts on a 90-minute nightly show in his 400-seat auditorium with the help of his girlfriend, Kathy. It's not about money. It's about exposing this art to the world and, and the capabilities that I have. It's just unreal. But I have a lot of fun in that stage show. We get people from all over the world and it's gauged to entertain from the smallest little one to the oldest you could get in there. I decided to venture into the near impossible. One of the near impossible feats Ray is capable of is sawing onto a pencil and a toothpick. I can saw the alphabet twice on a pencil. Well, something that seems impossible, take that and turn, turn it to possible. It's interesting. <laughs> you know, you can't get bored with that. Ray's talents even got him into Ripley's Believe It or Not. And another highlight of the show is when Ray saws directly onto a belt buckle while an audience member is still wearing it. I've done uh, 14,000 of those belt buckles. Oh, wow. And I just ordered uh, another 1,000 buckle bags. Okay. Now, see, i got to live a little while, so I can do those. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> John and I spent the next two and a half hours with Ray and Kathy. While he got a new shipment of wood, talked about his past tours around the country, and talked to every curious customer that stopped by. What size chainsaw do you use? Different sizes? Or? Well, my smallest chainsaw is right here. <laughs> I mean real chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> a logger gave that to me. He says, whenever they you know, ask about chainsaws, show them your smallest one. Ray and Kathy were such nice people, we almost forgot we had another 70 miles to drive and plenty more to see. But we will be back to catch the show later that night. Next site along Route 1 is the Penobscot Narrows Bridge. Opened in 2006, it is one of three cable state bridges in the U.S. to utilize a unique cradle system. In the old Waldo Hancock Bridge, which is now completely gone, it boasts one of the world's tallest bridge observatories. So, are you nervous, John? A little. Scared of heights? Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say no, but yeah. <laughs> and uh, we talked about some humongous window being right outside the store, so we're gonna see what that's all about. <laughs> Let's hit a stair forward. Are you scared of heights? Yes. Cool. Great views of the Penobscot River, Route 1, and 
Fort Knox State Historic Site. Came here with 50 cents in my bucket. Now I own all this. <laughs> the observatory is a great stop for anyone not too terrified of heights. And nearby the Penobscot Narrows Bridge is another site not meant for the faint of heart. Colonel Buck's Cursed Tomb. According to legend, Colonel Buck burned a witch at the stake, and during the burning, her leg rolled out of the fire. Years later, when Colonel Buck died, an image of a leg appeared on his tomb. Colonel Buck's heirs replaced the monument twice, but the image of the foot keeps coming back. But what really terrified John and I was the fact that we still had 44 miles to drive to our hotel to check in, then drive 74 miles back to catch Ray's show by nightfall. But it was worth it. Ray's show was awesome. He saw it onto a toothpick. He saw the alphabet onto a pencil. He used two chainsaws at once. And then, he saw John's name onto a belt buckle while he was wearing it. Ray put on a two-hour show that night. And if you are ever in Hancock, Maine, definitely catch his performance.